welcome back. It is November 7th, beautiful day here in Iowa. I'm set up down on the River Bottom Farm. I've enjoyed some nice cruising this morning, saw a couple good bucks. As you guys know, um, my primary target this year is Chubbs, back on my home farm, and I've been spending a lot of time hunting him. Today we just uh, took a break and came over here. I've had two encounters with him so far. The first one was October 29th, afternoon sit. And I actually had another mature buck on the farm, one that I would shoot, a uh, buck we call the six by five, he's at least six and a half years old. He was working in and then he spotted Chubbs off in the brush and they broke out in a fight and he actually ran Chubbs off. Uh, that was a really cool encounter. And then since that time, Chubbs has kind of shifted over about 500 yards to a new area of the farm that he wasn't in uh, all year. And he's been pretty consistent in that area. So. Now that I've got him relocalized, I've been focused on hunting him there. And we encountered him again the afternoon of November 3rd. And unfortunately that afternoon, we kind of had light and variable winds. The primary wind was supposed to be out of the Southwest, which was really great for that set. We had Chubbs working down to us about 4.40 in the afternoon. And then we had some um, gust out of the East. There was also a little bit of activity on one of the homesteads that he could see. And there's probably a combination of things that made him want to clear out of there. But I do think he, he probably got a little whiff of us. Didn't seem overly spooked and I have continued to get pictures of him since that time and he's still active in that same food plot. So uh, we're just gonna stay after him. I mean, this time of year, the bucks are definitely on their feet. They're looking for does. Uh, we're gonna, we're kind of approaching that lockdown phase. So I'm hoping in the next couple afternoons I can catch up with him in that area. But my plan is just to keep putting my hours in. As long as he's on the farm, you know, the farm's not super, super big. So if I keep sitting there, hopefully we can get him in bow range and, and get a shot at him here pretty soon. On this week's show, we're gonna join Owen. He had an awesome hunt on Halloween night and took down one of his target bucks. And then we're gonna jump over to Max. Max has been having some really cool encounters, lots of good running activity, and he actually had a couple close calls himself. Hope you guys enjoy the show. see that sticker's buck but really who knows what might be in here there's a lot of good area around this farm and this is the first year running cameras in here so we could definitely see a surprise buck we had some action just getting in here there was we seen two or three bucks just in this timber right here one doe caught us moving getting in so eh, we'll have to see if she comes back looking for us like those does did the other night but we, we got an awful nice evening I'm looking for a pretty good hunt we haven't been in here in about two weeks, and we had a good hunt when we hunted it the one time, so I'll be surprised if we don't see some good action. Let's set in here a few hours, see how it goes. It's about five o'clock, guys. We still got a little buck right here. A couple does out in the food plot. It's looked like November 10th since we got here. There's been bucks chasing does all over in here. I'll be really surprised if we don't see a mature buck tonight. I'm counting on it, planning on it, preparing myself mentally for it.
spin around I rattled and snort wheezed we were talking about it and all of a sudden Joe goes here he comes right down the edge he went up and looped around can't get him much closer than that he knew where that rattling came from well that got me a little worked up my my knees were shaking man I I almost forced one through there because I had a little hole to shoot through I'm at full draw I'm like Nah, just wait, he's gonna clear that. Oh man. Got a nice little adrenaline rush on that's awesome right down the edge. Probably right in the creek if I had to guess. There he is. Oh yeah, there he is on that side. Sure enough. Didn't go far. <laughs> We're about almost three quarters of a mile from where we encountered him the first time, but I knew he'd been over here before, so I didn't think it was a long shot to see him. And sure enough, he was in here. I said it today, I said round two for stickers. He won the first one, but round two's my round. All right, guys, we got him out here in the daylight where you could get a little better look at him. Kind of talk about our, our strategy for him. The hunt really started, I guess, this spring. As I've mentioned before, that was a new farm. And the landowner, he was nice enough to give me the trail pictures from 2020. So this buck was one of those in 2020 that uh, identified as a mature buck. He was actually a little bit bigger last year. He had more kickers and stickers. He was a little bigger. I don't know how old he is, if he was on his way downhill or he just had kind of a bad growing year. The rest of the deer have done really well this year. so. I kind of wonder if he just had a, a down year for whatever reason. Maybe he was in bad shape coming out of the road or something. But at any rate, we knew it was a deer we wanted to target. So we started setting up that farm and we knew we needed food in there. You know, for this time of year, if you got the food, you've got the does and then you've got these kind of bucks. So ended up being just a fantastic hunt. You guys saw it. He walked out there about 42 yards first and I was gonna take that shot, I pulled back the full draw on him. Just about the time I started to settle the pin in, he turned to walk away and of course it was a terrible shot angle so I just let him walk. Then he got he got around the corner where he couldn't see us which was what I wanted because that tree wasn't, it didn't have a lot of cover in it but once he got up there, you know, we hit the horns and snort wheezed at him and grunted a couple times and he didn't respond, he didn't come charging right in like we thought he would, being a mature buck in there, but you saw it, he walked right down the path we walked in, so just a, that's another tip too, is those mowed, mowed paths and keep your boots sprayed down. Makes a big difference as far as him picking up your ground sand. He never had a clue we were there, but walked basically to the, to the base of the tree. Just a cool buck, and the best part is, I've still got a tag, so we get to keep hunting, but just, uh, Fortunate to have an opportunity any day to get to spend out there in the outdoors is just a win for sure whether you get a deer or not. The next call I'm going to make will be to my dad to let him know I got a got a buck. Same thing I've been doing, well, I don't know, the last 30 years or so. I've been, I guess I've been bow hunting about 35 years and I always call my dad and let him know I got one. So he introduced me to it and got me in the outdoors at a young age. So. Always got to give thanks, grandpas and moms, dads, uncles, everybody that introduced us. Don't forget to thank them. All right, well, here we go. November the 2nd, evening hunt. Josh and I were out this morning for a quick hunt. I was in a really pretty spot in the hardwoods, but just saw one young buck and got down just about nine o'clock. So this afternoon, again, I say this every time, but the anticipation is so high. 
uh, Josh and I are on the farm that Grant had that really great encounter with that that deer in uh, early October. That is about 250 yards here to my north where that encounter took place. Um, and that day that we saw that, all those deer in that alfalfa, that's that field that's right over my shoulder here. So uh, the game plan tonight was to once again bring the decoy, but sit way back up here on this ridge um, and just try to figure this farm out a little bit. It's kind of an observation sit, but I did bring the decoy uh, in an attempt to call if I need to, to give them something to look at. So uh, as we were just kind of getting ready and getting comfortable, we did have a pretty good look to be a three-year-old. I thought at first that 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 was a mature deer, but I think after looking at him for a little while, I think he looked to be a three-year-old, but he's a nice frame deer. He got my blood pumping right off the gate, so we're excited. We've got two deer already in the alfalfa, and like I said, we can see a ton of country, so I expect to see a bunch of deer tonight and uh, hopefully at least lay eyes on a good one.
It is the morning of November the 3rd and Josh and I are tucked up in a tree on uh, the permission farm down south that Grant and I hunt. I've been wanting to sit this tree now for two years and never had a chance to last year uh, after tagging out uh, in the middle of October so never made it to this tree last year but hung it last summer and know it, just knew it's in a great spot with all the trails and it's still in this giant funnel that connects these two big blocks of timber in this neighborhood. This morning when I woke up, I had a picture of a deer I call T-Swoop, a deer that Grant and I have probably got at number two on the list right now behind Eddie. I had a 4.15 a.m. picture about 100 yards from where we're sitting, so walking in with pins and needles. I was terrified the whole time, and sure enough, after just climbing up in the tree, I just pulled the camera bag up. T Swoop walked about 25 to 30 yards up under us, but uh, there's nothing we can do. We didn't have the camera out yet, and we didn't have camera light regardless, so I'm not saying he can't come back, but it takes the wind out of my sails a little bit, so regardless, we're gonna sit in here for a few hours this morning. Uh, it feels incredible. It's probably not even 30 degrees. Thermal should start rising up out of this creek bottom, so. We're going to set it out, hopefully, for some good action. just about came together. I'm still tore up, if you can't tell. 
just shaking like a leaf. Josh looked at me earlier. And we heard something. He looked at me and said it sounded like a deer coughing or something. I, I couldn't figure it out. Finally, I spotted some does running around back here. I knew there had to be a buck with them. And sure enough, they came tearing down through here. And maybe it's just that I'm all tore up, but I don't know if I know what deer that is. I, I think I got a decent idea, but I'm gonna have to look at some pictures. All I know is that's a shooter all day long. You cannot ask for anything better than that. Just an hour into the hunt. I mean, just tearing through here. That was wild. <laughs> that is what November is all about. So I think there's a really good chance he still comes by. And if not, there's it's definitely going on right now, so we're gonna sit it out for a while for sure, so. Oh, with any luck, that deer will come back through here, maybe push those does back through and actually stop in a shooting line this time. He was all inside a bow range all day long, but didn't have any clear lanes, so. Oh, I may have to sit down for a fall out of this tree. Well, as you guys saw there, I've had a span of a couple of really awesome hunts. That afternoon hunt um, over that decoy was by far one of the coolest encounters I've ever seen, just to have a deer like that come up in there and, and uh, be so vocal and and just be aggravated like that and just get to watch him, you know, just where there was a fly on the wall in that scenario, watching him respond to that decoy, it was so cool. And then following that afternoon hunt, the next morning on that permission farm with Grant and I was, Seeing that really good deer chase those does around was, man, it had me tore up. That's a deer that after I've looked at the footage a few times now, I believe him to be what a deer that we were calling the flyer buck last year. The frame was super similar. Just my best guess is that's him. He, if it is, he did lose that flyer that he have, had off his right side. But regardless of who it is or if it's actually him, he's a giant. And uh, since then, we've got a couple of pictures of him. Nothing great, so I'm not sure, you know, if, if it was just that hot doe bringing him through there or uh, what the circumstance was. But regardless, awesome encounter, great deer, and uh, this week has been really good. Grant and I sat yesterday morning and saw just a pile of deer and some young bucks, and even the day before that, I had a great hunt as well. So I feel like I'm I'm dialing in, and I'm, I'm only days away, or hopefully only hunts away from getting an arrow launched at one of these bucks so um fortunately we did have eddie uh our number one target show back up he's been missing for a while uh so he's back in the area and uh, as soon as these southern winds get out of here these next couple days and it switches back out of the north i think i'm going to try to make a move on him so this morning has been quite slow unfortunately for it being november the 7th but uh, we're gonna stick after it we got a really solid week of hunts ahead i feel so I'm going to stick after it here and uh, hope to get it done. But uh, we appreciate you guys tuning in and watching. We're all out in full force and we're having a lot of fun doing it. So thanks again for you guys watching. We'll see you back here next week.